solution is quite good. So, so that was the point. You know, in order to understand what a formal life is, you should never forget this concept of indifference, which is neither a presupposition, a more original state that we have to reach going back. It didn't exist before the splitting. That's important. Eh? It's, uh, Often, when we have to face an opposition, we try to reach something which is beyond it. Can be, but often it's not the right way. You know? Perhaps it's uh, something which will result from the opposition. So this is the meaning of the hyphen. Eh? Uh, we should now uh, make uh, some philosophy of punctuation. Eh? Punctuation is very important. Is always repeated that punctuation is as important as a concept. And uh, so the, the technical term of philosophy are not necessarily word, concept. Or, or for instance, also an adverb can become a, a technical term. For instance, uh, in, uh, scholars know how important is in Kant the adverb delightful, notwithstanding. Uh, and uh, yes. in law as well. Hmm? In law as well. Notwithstanding. Yeah. So it uh, can be an adverb, but can be also a punctuation. So for instance, the hyphen is one of the uh, Heidegger writing in hyphen, the hyphen, the Hyphen design or that. Mm -hmm. So the hyphen is very. The, the meaning, what is the meaning of a hyphen? Mm -hmm. Go for the tree. It goes between the two poles or points. Yeah, but the reason is that the, 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 the hyphen both divides and unites. Yeah. So it's very, very electrical, right? because it divides. But also unites in this case, especially. Well, in that sense, it seems uh, like a marriage. Um, there's also something that I think divides and unites. But certainly, <laughs> <laughs> this is not the high thing. <laughs> but, but certainly, it's something that's a low. relationship. So, so the hyphen, I, I'm still not sure if I see. How it's not. No, right, right, not the, the, right. There you're right. No. I, I employed this hyphen, but it's true that, as we just said, it's a peculiar relationship uh, of division and union together. That's why I use it, but you're right, it's still a kind of relationship, a direct relationship. But I could have written also like that. Column. Column is also very interesting. Column is called English. Yeah, course. Cool. Very interesting thing, the column. Mm -hmm. To understand. Adorno said it's the, the red light? It's not the red light? Yeah. Stop light? In the circulation of concepts. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But, for instance, in the, in the usage that Deleuze, uh, that Deleuze uh -huh. makes in it, In the last uh, text, the laser writes, "Limanance column in V." He, he could have written "Limanance et la vie." It also is very interesting. Eh? The conjunction "and" is very interesting. Yeah. And no, he doesn't write "and." He write "column" because the fifth was the strongest expression of an absolute immanence. There is an immanence. So they are, again, a kind of indifference, very strong opinions. Lyotard and Gruber wrote a small book uh, which bears the title The Hyphen, and they use another diacritical marker, uh, the quotation mark, to modify the hyphen. But the hyphen that they refer to uh, not only uh, separates and distinguishes and unites, but it brings about a 
uh, and diffusion of embedding of one into the other to an indifferent degree. And of course, the word that they speak about is Judeo hyphen Christian. And they talk about the civilization. And the, the invocation of that concept is very, very complicated. Uh, like that. It sets loose almost everything. Yeah. Indeed, I uh, want just to uh, emphasize that we need a philosophy for punctuation. And there is a very little thing. There is a short essay by Adorno called The Philosophy of Punctuation. That's a very kind of ironic uh, little essay. But we need, we should, we should have a serious attempt to make a philosophy of uh, uh, also the quotation marks are of course interesting. So it's, uh, yeah, another another way of saying it would say that uh, to that this of this genitive is that again an opposition, uh, a subjective genitive or an objective genitive. You know this grammarian difference, no? Subjective, uh, objective is when the first term uh, determines the second. So the four informs the life, four of life. But the, the subjective is then when you read four of life as life as the dominant is active. The active element is life, it's the life which uh, produced the form. But again, I would say this is uh, neither a subjective genitive nor uh, an objective genitive. It's a kind of. Uh, that's why we, yeah, we are, these are all ways to point towards a no relation in a word, in a language which always expresses a relation. No, of language also express, always express relationship. But if you have to think a known uh, relationship, you have to to force the terms in order to reach a... So are you saying that another form of the indifference, another expression of indifference, is that it's neither of those, it's neither a subjective nor objective genitive? They're, they're, they're indifferent, there is no distinction, Therefore, that distinction doesn't hold. Is that another way of stating the same thing? Yeah, as you said, it, the, the, the interesting point in the, in the difference is that the two terms are in some way distinguished, but not in a way that you can assign or, uh, an identity, a specific difference which we identify one against the other. And yet, um, is there a difference between saying is there is still a way in which you are still choosing there that they have to be unified? Because another way of punctuating would be with a backslash, which in like in you know and backslash or, which is a refusal to choose one way or the other. And yet it's still it's not about unity. One in a backslash overlaps the other. Ultimately, it's going to be one or the other. It's yeah, you have to resist not only against the dualism but also against the. The coincidence, the uh, monism, the idea that they identify. So the, the difference uh, resists against the truth. That is also uh, another example one can make uh, is a whole strategy against the Position that define Judaism. So, the main opposition that defines, as you know, Judaism is Jew, not Jew. Jew, God. And the mark of this is circumcision. All the strategy of Paul is how to neutralize this opposition without destroying it. He doesn't want to destroy the idea of a Jew, nor the idea of a non-Jew. He wants to, perhaps, and he never says like that, but his strategy is to reach a point of, of indifference of death, or for him, more precisely, to neutralize the position. 